This morning I continue the excerpts from Meditation Times, October 2011. Depression, the side effect of sadness. Depression is the side effect of sadness. One thing in life is to find meaning in the present moment. That is the most important thing. If you learn to find meaning in the present moment, if you learn to be happy in the present moment, then depression cannot be there, sadness will not be there, anger will not be there. All these emotions that inflict upon our inner serenity and the transcendence beyond duality will not be there. The basic flavor of your being should be of love, rejoicing, and celebration. Then you can do anything. Money will not destroy it, but you put everything aside simply to run after the money, the dollars. And then one day you find out that they cannot purchase anything. Money cannot purchase the peace of mind. It cannot purchase the happiness. It cannot purchase all that is valuable in life. But you have to learn to distinguish between what is essential and what is non-essential. This was one of the parables of next on the Sufi Brijmohan Lal. Saar or Asar. The world is a combination of Saar and Asar, the essential and non-essential. But we always choose the non-essential against the essential. I am not saying the money is not important. Money is a very important medium. But it is a servant. It should be directly used to bring the subtle happiness. Yes, there are certain conveniences which are necessary. Car is a convenience. A comfortable house, whether it is rented or your own, is also a necessity. A job is a necessity. A certain amount of bank balance is a necessity. But the, beyond this, there are certain things which are more essential and valuable in life. That we have to understand. Whenever you are depressed, like any other emotion, wait for the moment when, when depression disappears. Remember one thing, nothing lasts forever. The depression too will go and then when it leaves you, wait, be aware and alert. Because after the depression, after the night, there will be dawn and sun will rise again. If you can be alert in that moment, you will be happy that you are depressed. You will be grateful that you are depressed because only through your depression was this minute of happiness possible. But what do you do? We move in an infinite regression. Whenever depression is there, we try to regress. We get depressed and because of depression, there arises this depression that comes because of certain circumstances and situation is the primary depression. And then when you regress, you go into the second stage of depression. The second depression that follows is more dangerous. If you are depressed, that is okay. Nothing is wrong in it. It is beautiful because through it you will learn and be mature. But then you feel badly. You think, why do I get depressed? 
I should not get depressed and then you start fighting with depression. The first depression is good but the second depression that comes as the outcome of the first is unreal and the unreal depression will cloud your mind. You will miss the moment that would allow that he would have allowed the real depression. When depressed, be depressed. Simply be depressed. Do not get depressed about your depression. Or simply do not allow the second depression to descend in you. When depressed, simply be depressed. There is no need to fight. No need to create any diversion. Do not force it to go. Just allow it to happen. Because it has come on its own and it will go on its own. Life is flux. Nothing remains the same. You are not needed. The river moves by itself. You do not have to push the water of the river to move forward. This is natural. Water continuously flows. Emotions continue flow like the water in the river bed. If you are trying to push it, you are simply foolish. The river flows by itself. Allow it to flow. When depression is there, allow it to be there. Do not get depressed about it. The first depression is natural, it has come because of any circumstance and situation. But if you start trying to push it, you will enter into the second layer of depression. If you want to remove it sooner, you will get depressed. If you fight with it, you will create a secondary depression that is dangerous. The first depression is beautiful, God-given. The second depression is your own creation. It is not God-given, it is mental depression. And most of the time when you go to the psychiatrist or to the doctor for the treatment of depression, it is for the mental depression that you have created. And that is why it takes very long to get cured. Then you will move in mental grooves. They are infinite. If you get depressed, be happy that you are depressed and allow the depression to be. Then suddenly depression will disappear and there will be a breakthrough. No clouds will be there. The sky will be clear. For a single moment, heaven opens for you. If you are not depressed about your depression, you can contact, you can commune, and you can enter this heavenly gate. And once you know it, you have learned one of the ultimate laws of life. Indeed, life uses the opposite as the teacher. In the East, depression has never been a problem. The poor has learned to enjoy whatsoever little they have. And the rich has learned that having the whole world at your feet means nothing. You have to go in search for me. There are examples. For thousands of years people have gone in search of truth and have found it. There is no need to be, to be in despair or in depression. You remember Buddha left the palace at the age of 29. At the age of 29 he left the palace and went into rigorous austerities and practices in order to attain to enlightenment. And it took him 11 years to attain to enlightenment. From the age of 29 to 40, but he did not go into depression because it is not happening, not happening. You have to do something else. You will understand 
you will remember the story of Thomas Alva Edison who has discovered the electricity. He has been experimenting for electricity and each time he experimented went on failing. He has done 350 different experiments but all of them failed. People try to tell him that you have failed 350 times. There is no need to continue. That is an utter failure and you are not going to get anything. But you know what Alva said? He said, can't you see that I have failed 350 times? That means that if there are 400 possibilities for anything, 350 has been tried out and they have not been proved beneficial. So now only 50 more I have to try. There has to be a possibility to attain to it. To that electricity, once a thought has come to my mind, it has come from a different source, from an unknown source, there is a possibility that electricity can be discovered. But there has to be ex experiments. And I have not used the correct experiment. Because once I use the correct experiment, the correct combination, it will happen. Imagine the situation. He was not depressed after 350 experiments. You do not get one thing and you get depressed. And then you enter into the second depression and that continues. You just have to move into an unknown dimension. They have never explored it, but as they start exploding the new dimension, it means the journey inwards, a journey to their own self, and that they have lo lost starts returning. The man today needs very urgently a great movement of meditation. Otherwise, this depression is going to destroy people. And these people will be the talented ones because have achieved power, they have achieved money, they achieved whatsoever they want and the highest degree in education too. These are talented people and they are feeling despair. Depression means that somehow anger is in you in the negative state. The cause of it is anger somewhere. Depression means that somehow anger is in you in a negative state. Depression is the expression of the negative state of anger. The very word is beautiful. It says something is being pressed, depressed. If you go and try to understand this word as depressed, something has been depressed in you and that is why this has been happening. What has been depressed? It is the anger somewhere has been repressed and that is you are pressing something inside and when anger is pressed too much it becomes sadness. Sadness the negative state of being angry. The feminine way of being angry. It is a very subtle way of being angry. Only Understanding flowers, not depression. And if you cannot flower, existence is not going to shower flowers in you. Existence gives you only that which you are. Existence simply responds to you, whatsoever you are. Existence gives you more of that. If you are having many flowers within flowering, a million times more flowers will shower on you. If you have deep depression, the existence helps that two a million times more depression will come to you. Whatsoever you are will knock at your door. Whatsoever, whatsoever you are will be given to you in abundance. If you suffer depression, this simply means you have repressed too much. You have repressed too much. Depression is nothing but repression. 
you are depressed so much because you have not allowed you have not been allowed to express yourself dynamic meditation gibberish are the ways of expression in expressing yourself are catharsis all that has been repressed in your unconscious finds expression without harming anyone and you will be unburdened you have gone through catharsis this will make you saner and healthier human ego is the is the source of all these problems wars conflicts jealousies fear depression and so on and so forth feeling oneself as a failure continuously comparing with others making everybody hurt tremend makes everyone hurt tremendously remember you cannot have everything somebody is more beautiful than you but that hurts somebody is has more money than you again it hurts somebody is more knowledgeable than you it hurts millions of things are there to hurt you but you do not know it is not those things that are hurting you because they do not hurt me or buddhas they are hurting you because of your ego ego is surrounded by depression anxiety anguish and all kinds of sick ideas if you compare yourself with the people who are greater in some way than you you will become bitter your life will become poisoned by the comparison you will remain always in the state of depression as if god has deceived or betrayed you or if you compare yourself with people who are smaller than you in some way lesser than you then you will become very egoistic this is one of the reasons why politicians are always surrounded by people smaller than themselves if you are surrounded by people who are smaller than you then they collect joy from them they collect smaller people around themselves so that they can look bigger they can they are bigger by comparison because everyone tells you that you are the boss it is stupid but one cannot expect anything more than that from a politician make it a point whatsoever sadness anger depression or unhappiness be with it and you will suddenly become surprised that if you remain with sadness sadness changes into beautiful things sadness becomes a death if you remain with anger not thinking about it just being with anger is transformed into forgiveness because forgiveness is the antidote that comes when you meditate when you live with your anger you witness it if you remain with sex sex takes on a different quality and becomes love meditation is the only answer to all the questions that man has be it doubt be it anger be it frustration but you think every single ailments physical or psychological you want a separate treatment i remembered in my town there was a vegetable market it was a multi dimensional market a certain portion of that was dealing in the vegetables certain portions was dealing in 
the other food grains wholesale and retail so it was a combined multi-dimensional market in the middle of the market where people are coming from villages from far away places bringing their produce to sell in the market to this town there was a big hut a galvanized shed shop that was a doctor shop open from all sides he was dealing in all sort of medicines all pathies homeopathy allopathy you name anything and what he used to do his treatment was more psychological any time patient comes and he said doctor i have this problem so he gathered about 10 or 15 people and tell them to sit down in one line then he takes the syringe full up with the ordinary water and goes with the same syringe injecting all the people and they had so much of trust that all of them used to feel good he had one barrel of the ayurvedic medicine the indian he put everything together somebody comes he takes out the fills up a bottle from that barrel and gives it this is your medicine somebody have a headache same medicine this is your medicine and it specifically has been made for you so one remedy for all illnesses and that is meditation this is not concoction this is simply a medicine for all meditation means you are going to the core of it you are being a witness to it you are not doing anything whatsoever is happening is happening for any reason let it be meditation is the only answer to all the questions that man has it may be frustration it may be depression sadness meaninglessness anguish doubt or any other problem but the answer is one meditation is the answer the simplest method of meditation is just a way of witnessing being mindful of it. there are 112 techniques of meditation but witnessing is the essential core of all the 112 techniques of meditation enumerated by shiva in the gyan bharata so far as i am concerned witnessing is the only method those 112 techniques of meditation are different applications of witness different applications of witness the essential core the spirit of meditation is to learn how to be witness something is happening you re- realize that it is happening to your mind to your body and you are not the mind you are not the body only then witnessing can happen when it happens to someone else in your you are going on the street and passing through driving through the street and suddenly you see something it does not bother you you simply saw it witnessed it and you passed from it but then if the same thing happens to any one of your family member then the witnessing is not there and when it happens to you you cannot give yourself consolation you cannot do anything you simply suffer someone has had it you buy the medicine you make the tea for him you console him that this headache is nothing it's just a passing thing when it happened to someone else you did not even pay that much notice but with your family member you are paying a little attention but when it happens you are totally into the groove those 112 techniques of meditations are different applications of witness the essential core the spirit of meditation is to learn how to be a witness the moment you are you realize that you are not the body you are not the mind instead you are beyond that but do not say that i am soul as hindus say 
something you have not experienced within, how can you speak about that? Simply say that I am neither the body nor the mind. I am neither. This is what Shankar did at the age of eight years. He was wandering in Himalayas. He belonged to the southern tip of India, the core, the end of India, and the Himalayas is in the north, far away. And those times there were no planes available that he could just take a flight and reach in within two hours to Himalayas. He has to be walking. And imagine an eight-year-old boy. Imagine the situation. Just do not think in terms of Shankar was all of a sudden the Shankar was reached to the mountains. His father has died when he was very young. His mother was alone. and he was born in kaladi uh, in kerala which is the southernmost tip of india and himalayas is the northernmost tip imagine the distance between the two go to the map and just try to visualize the distance a 8 year old boy irrespective of any fear irrespective of any atrocity irrespective of any dangers in the traveling alone he was wandering in himalayas when i discovered long ago that shankar was how did shankar discovered govindpad acharya his guru he was wandering in the himalayas at the age of 8 First, imagine this: a the boy of eight years traveled thousands of miles. How did he reach there? Was it his imagination that he has reached there? How long he would have taken, and when did his search began? And there, when the guru asked him, "Who are you?" he says he composed uh, Atma Shakam. Atma means self. or nirvan means enlightenment shakam means a composition of eight six sutras six couplets is not a couplet six compositions of four lines each and he says mano buddhi ahankar chittani nahi i am neither the mind man mano buddhi na intellect mano buddhi ahankar the ego the ego sense and neither the memory i am none of these mano buddhi mano means man mind chit this is another aspect mano buddhi intellect ahankar the ego sense and chit the memory i am neither of these then witnessing can happen then who are you and this entire nirvan shakam explains that i have two videos on nirvan shakam one the complete chanting of the nirvan shakam and the other is a commentary on nirvan shakam on my channel we can discover this you are witnessing that i am neither the body nor the mind i am beyond the two the state of beyondness then you can be a witness and witnessing is the only method those 100 and 112 techniques are different applications of witness you are seeing a tree you are there the tree is there but you cannot find one thing more that you are seeing the tree that there is a witness in you which is see you seeing the tree the world is not divided only into objects and subjects there are there is also something beyond both object and subject and that beyond is meditation
that beyond is meditation whenever you are depressed wait for the moment that depression goes nothing lasts for forever depression will go and when it leaves you wait again be aware and alert because after depression after night there will be dawn the sun will rise again the sun will rise again you can be alert in that moment you will be happy that you were depressed you will be grateful that you are depressed because only through depression the minute of happiness is possible when depression is there allow it to be this to be there do not get depressed about it if you want to remove it sooner you will get depressed if you fight with it you will create secondary depression and then suddenly you will realize that depression has disappeared and there will be breakthrough no clouds will be there the sky will be crystal clear for a moment heaven opens for you if you are not depressed about your depression you can contact you can commune hope simply means hopeful attitude about everything about everything and optimistic view a hopeful attitude is indeed looking at the golden side whatsoever happens you remain hopeful you are not depressed depression comes only if you look at the wrong side of things there are two sides the wrong side and the right side you can look at the wrong side and then you will be depressed or you can look at the right side the golden side and you will be happy so it all depends on you the person who is hopeless always looks at what is wrong the first thing he tries to find is what is wrong it all depends on you whether you live in hell or you live in heaven living is hate in anger in jealousy in depression you are living in hell and living in love in compassion in truth in sincerity you are living in heaven if you are depressed so it be do not do anything and what can you do whatsoever you do will be done out of depression so it will create more confusion you can pray to god but you will your you will be you will pray so depressingly that you will even make god depressed through your prayers and that is when most of the time do the prayers when they are depressed so when you are doing the prayer have you ever observed if you are sad and you are doing the prayer your prayer will be sadness your prayer will be depressed your prayer is going to be a depressed prayer you can meditate but what would you do depression will be there whatsoever you do depression will follow more confusion will be created more frustration because you cannot succeed and when you cannot succeed you will feel more depressed it is better to remain with the first depression than go on creating the web of depression remain with the first the original is beautiful the second will be false and third will be far out third will be the far of acting do not create these the first is beautiful you are depressed so this is how the existence is happening to you at this moment whatsoever comes is for a specific reason when leaves fall from the tree always remember when depression is there 
The tree does not get depressed when the leaves fall from the tree. The tree does not say that what people will think about me. All the leaves have fallen. The tree knows that this is the natural process of things. When the leaves fall, after the tree has borne those leaves for a few months, its nourishment has exhausted. It needs further to be nourished for continuation of life. The leaves fall. They fall and decay there and form the manure. When the rain falls, that leaves that has decayed, fallen on the ground and decayed, they are absorbed. When they are absorbed, the more nourishment comes to the tree. Then what happens? Once again the new leaves, new foliage comes during autumn. Autumn is beautiful. Don't you see that the autumn is beautiful in those countries which have cold all the weathers? During autumn the trees, the leaves turn gold and then fall. It is a beauty of its own. There are people who are lovers of autumn. There are people who are lovers of spring. When daffodils, the flowers blossom to infinite quantum. You enjoy the beauty and you tell your friends to come during the autumn month. It is really beautiful. The spring is beautiful and autumn is beautiful. Last time you came during the spring season, this time come during the autumn. It is beautiful. But when the autumn in your life comes and you get depressed, what kind of intelligence is this? We have a beautiful word in Trinidad for this kind of intelligence. And we call it dotishness. It is not stupidity, it is the extreme degree of it is the extreme degree of we have to wait for the call is dropped. What kind of intelligence is this? Trinidad has a beautiful word, colloquial word called totishness. When you pass the stupidity, the extreme, the superlative degree of stupidness is totishness. You are depressed, but the tree is not depressed. And you rejoice the two stages of the tree, the autumn and the spring, when all the leaves fall. And during the winter, when all the leaves fall, the tree is bare, and you see the snow falling on that. A beauty of it. This is the scheme of the nature to keep you protected. If the leaves continue to remain there during the winter season and when the snow falls, what happens? The snow will be stuck to the trees and then the trees will be harmed. So in order to protect the tree, the nature has provided a scheme. This should be your understanding. You are depressed, so remain with it. Wait and watch. You cannot be depressed for long because in this world nothing is permanent. This world is a flux, constantly moving and changing. This world cannot change its basic law for you so that you remain depressed forever. You are depressed today Tomorrow you will not be because the existence is not prejudiced to you. But you think that existence is doing this to you. Why God is doing this to you? This is what you consider your wisdom. You decide for yourself. The world cannot change its basic law for you so that you can 
you remain depressed forever. Nothing is here forever. Everything is constantly moving and changing. Existence is a river that cannot stop just for you so that you remain depressed forever or you remain happy forever. It is moving. It has already moved. If you look at your depression, you will feel that even your depression is not the same the next moment. It is changing and different and is different each moment. Just watch, remain with it and do nothing. This is how transformation happens through non-doing. Transformation happens through non-doing. You are simply watching what is happening. Your depression is going through these stages. It is changing and different each moment. Just watch, remain with it and do nothing. This is how transformation happens through non-doing. This is, me, this is what is meant by effortless effort. Feel depression, taste it deeply and live it. It is your fate. Then suddenly you will feel it has disappeared because the man who can accept even depression cannot remain depressed from that. Make it a point. A man who accepts even depression cannot remain depressed for long. A man, a mind that can accept even depression cannot remain depressed. Depression needs a non-accepting mind. Anger, all these negative emotions require a non-accepting mind. And in non-accepting, the mind cooperates and you remain within the group grip of it. Depression needs a non-accepting mind. Anger needs a non-accepting mind. Frustration needs a non-accepting mind. Doubt needs a non-accepting mind. If it is there, let it be. It will vanish on its own because life is a flux, constantly moving just as the river water is constantly moving. You do not have to push it when you are uh, when the water is not moving, just as when your manual car is not moving, you give it a jump start. The river does not need jump start. The river is constantly in the flow. If the flow to you seems to be ceased, it is not. It is constantly moving. All these negative emotions need an accepting mind. It needs a non-accepting mind, not the accepting mind. This is not good, that is not good, this should not be this way, that should not be. You should have not said this, you should have said this instead. This must be like this. Everything is denied, everything is non-accepting. Even no is the basis of everything. You have learned the art of saying no to everything. Learn the art of saying yes to everything. Even happiness will be rejected by such a mind. Such a mind will find something to reject in happiness as well. Somebody, I have heard a Sufi mystic was there. His wife did not accept him as a mystic. She always went on comparing him with someone or the other. So he decided to do a miracle. So one day his wife was sitting and he flew across over her head. So when in the evening the man came back, so his wife told him what kind of Sufi you are, what kind of miracle you can do. Today there was a man who I see flew in the sky across over my head. That is miracle. If you can do something like that, certainly I will consider you a miracle. Oh really that's so? said the Sufi. He said yes that is miracle. Indeed that is miracle. 
So you like the man who flew across? Do you know who he was? It was I who was the person who, were, who flew across over your head. Oh, is that so? said the wife. Yes, really it is so. The wife said, that is why you was flying. You could not even fly straight. You was flying tilted, slanted. You have to learn to fly straight. But before, until she discovered that it was he, she was singing praises of him. But the moment she realized that it was he, then she again finds the deficiency, finds the something wrong in that. So this is how the human mind is. It finds something wrong even in the things that are good, even in happiness it finds something to reject. I cannot accept it because you know who brought the neighbor and I don't like that neighbor. Although I like the food very much because I always like this particular kind of food, but I cannot accept it because you know who brought it? The neighbor. And the neighbor I don't like. He's so nagging, I can't accept this food. Even in the goodness, even in the happiness, you will find some reason to reject it. See, does it not happen in your day-to-day -day life? You are thirsty and someone who had been teasing you gives you a bottle of water because you are needy. No, 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 I don't want from you. Although you are dire in need of the water bottle, no, no, not at all, not from you. This is our attitude. This is our way of life. Rejecting everything, even happiness, and we find a reason to reject everything. How can there be blissfulness there? How can there be witnessing? Witnessing means you have removed all that is personal elements in dealing with a particular situation or circumstance in life. And once you can be a witness to it, nothing remains. Nothing remains forever. There are many topics like polarity of emotions, which is basically saying another way of the same thing. Go through this magazine, Polarity of emotions, polarity of awareness and unawareness and you will discover a new meaning. Each time when meditation time comes, if you go through it, read the words and between the words, certainly it will bring meaningfulness in your life, a new meaning in life. Each magazine is created with utmost care and keeping you in mind. This is not simply something to adorn your bookshelves. It is to be digested so that your process of transformation continues. I am not spending my time simply because I want to. My main concern is transformation of human consciousness. For this, I continue to explore things from the deepest core of my being so that the transformation can be possible. Only this much for this topic, an excerpt from Meditation Times for the month of October 2011.